Beechwood, Ohio. Is it the best city to live in in Cleveland, Ohio? Some say yes, some say no. We're going to cover everything. We're going to cover housing prices, of course. We're going to cover market trends. We're going to cover retail, amenities. We're going to cover everything you need to know when considering Beechwood, Ohio is the next place to live. I'm outside the Beechwood Community Center. It is busy. One of the top traits of Beechwood, Ohio, the pool, the playground is amazing. There's some new developments coming in. There's a budgeted over $3 million improvement renovation for the Beechwood playground. There is so much to talk about. Let's get into the video right now. Hey, it's Joel Gableman with Gableman Group. If this is your first time to living in Cleveland, then welcome. We cover, of course, real estate and all fun things that I think you guys might find interesting. Places to go, things to do with the family, good places to eat, anything that I think you might find useful. Of course, we focus on families that need more space, whether you're looking at upsizing or you're moving here to Cleveland, Ohio, give us a call, text, email. I'm going to put the contact information below as well as in the description. And we get calls from people all over the city, the state, outside of the state, and sometimes outside of the country. With that said, we're going to be covering Beechwood, Ohio. Let's get into everything you need to know right now. So this is Beechwood, Ohio in the red border. It goes from, you can see Cedar Road over here, down around 271, Hiram Trail, and then up to Green. It was a village in 1915, and then in 1960, it became its own city. It is about five miles, give or take. You can see next to University Heights, Orange. There's Highland Hills, Shaker Heights, Pepper Pike, and uh, got about 12,000 residents. The name originally was due to the beech trees, spelled B-E-E-C-H. And the story goes, there was a clerical error where they misspelled, someone misspelled the name B-E-A-C-H, and the name stuck. Other fun facts about the city, you can see over here, about 12,000 residents, about eight, more than 18% are foreign born. And we're gonna get into more of these details. I'm also gonna share this link in the description so you can peruse and look about the different history about things like median home prices and golf courses and uh, kind of the cultural area and diversity of Beechwood. I like this website, it's from Data USA, breaks down Beechwood, Ohio employment by industry. So you can see healthcare and social assistance, a little over 23%. I'm not going to go through every single one, but it does show a graphical representation of the different industries. This website, and I'm going to share it again in the description, goes through a lot more than just the different breakdown of industries where people are working in Beachwood, a little over 5,000 employees. This other website, Career Expert, biggest companies to work for in Beachwood. You can do a breakdown of all of these. And then from the city itself, largest employers, no surprise, hospital, which we already knew from the graphic breakdown, Cleveland Clinic with about 2,400 employees, UH, Menorah Park down to City of Beachwood and Tremco. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to me, but this is a breakdown of employment. It also has an added benefit of lowering property taxes for homeowners, one of the nice features of Beachwood. So Data USA is starting to become one of my favorite websites. There's a lot of information. Diversity for Beachwood, Ohio. You can see it's just a graphical representation breakdown. White, not Hispanic is about 72%. Then Asian, not Hispanic. Um, you can, and again, you can see all of this stuff here. What I found interesting in some of this data, foreign born population, almost 20% of people living in Beachwood were not born here. And if we compare that with the United States, 13.5% of people living in the U.S. are foreign-born, and in Ohio, only 4.6% are foreign-born. To me, that's a great sign of diversity of people living in Beachwood, Ohio. And niche.com, one of my other favorite websites, they rated Beachwood AB+. Now, a piece of data that I took away from this graph or this representation is a master's degree or higher. National average is 13% of people have a master's degree or higher, but in Beechwood, 38%, almost 40% of people living in Beechwood have a master's degree or higher. And then they also cover it on the city of Beechwood itself, about resident population, race, age. I am specifically and intentionally not covering religion, I am very sensitive to a protected class and not steering people one way or the other. You can find all sorts of information on either mosques, temples, churches online. If you do have specific questions though on anything I didn't cover, of course, feel free to reach out. Your developments happening in Beach where the first is City Council back in November of 22 gave the go ahead for a 200 million mixed use development. 
This is at the former Doubletree Hotel. This is, if you want to look it up on Google Maps, Parkies Drive, but very excited to see more development come to the city. It's more tax revenue for the city, more benefits for the residents, and just fun places to go. The next two developments, Beachwood is eyeing a new playground at the Aquatic Center, and they even have an artist rendition. We can pull this up here for an artist rendition of the concept. Now, I already know the beach playground by the pool and it's already great. So kind of cool what they're thinking about, but this is just kind of an overall high level idea of the Beachwood playground. And at the end of the video, I interviewed um, numerous Beachwood residents and few of them said that one of the big draws about Beachwood is the aquatic center, is the playground. It's great for families. It's great just to have the kids go out there. The pool is packed in the summer. This new playground looks pretty, pretty sweet. So uh, excited to see this come in. And the third development is Columbus Paste Pickle and Chill is going to open an indoor-outdoor pickleball facility. Um, I've seen pickleball. Heard my friends talk about pickleball. I actually flew back from St. Louis a few months ago for a real estate conference. And they had pickleball in an abandoned mall. So I might have to try pickleball. So uh, this is going to be opening up on Chagrin Belord at Pavilion Shopping Center. It's, surprise, surprise, a mall, that uh, traditional mall. And uh, yeah, so there'll be a pickleball court in Beachwood that's coming. Those are some of the fun developments coming to Beachwood, Ohio. Those of you who know me know I love niche.com. So no surprise I love referencing them for schools, and Beachwood School is number fourth public schools in Cleveland per niche.com, A plus rating, A academics, A teachers, A minus diversity, college prep, uh, admissions. You can see the full report card, and I'm not going to go through everything over here. It is an excellent school. By all means, if you've got kids, you're thinking about Beachwood Schools, go through this. Look at the proficiency, look at the academics, look over at the map. What I like about niche.com also is they'll have reviews, student reviews, polls, teachers, 17 to 1 ratio, clubs and activities, C+, but you'll be able to read what people say and read reviews. So I really like that it's not just um, an organizational's opinion, uh, organization's opinion on a school, but you'll actually be able to read both parents and student reviews. Let's also take a look at another segment of niche.com for district ratings. 63 out of almost 11,600 best places to teach. They got great teachers, typically happy teachers equal happy students. Best school districts, top 1% of top school districts. And again, I'll leave the links. You can go through it. I'll also leave the links to US News and World Reports. Number 994 nationally out of tens of thousands of schools. Overall score at 94.9, it's 94.4% diversity. Uh, you can see is 40% minority enrollment. And you can see all the different rankings here. Beachwood has an outstanding school system. It is no surprise that they are always highly, highly ranked. So I've been making references to the Beachwood Playground and Aquatic Center, but now I'm actually going to show you what it looks like. So here we are at the playground. My kids go here, play around. Um, we're going to, with the power of editing, zoom up and take a look at the Aquatic Center. It's early. It's technically not open. So sorry, Beachwood, I snuck in. But you can see the water slides, umbrellas. Like I said, it gets jam-packed here in the summer. There's a snack area. It is one of the perks of living in Beachwood. Obviously, Beachwood residents can take guests. But this is just an awesome area. I'm really excited to see what they do with the redevelopment of the playground. Just an awesome, awesome place for Beachwood. Starting with places to eat, there are a ton of places to eat. Hyde Park Steakhouse, Shuhei for Sushi, Mexican, yours truly, Cedar Creek Grill, the list goes on. You've got Legacy Village. Legacy Village is an outdoor lifestyle center, an outdoor mall. They've got a ton of stuff to do, to see, to shop. Um, it's a cool area if you want to bring during a nice day the kids and sit outside. They've got Capitol Grill, Cheesecake Factory, Melting Pot, different places to shop, eat play different activities that are coming up rather than just talk about legacy village let me give you kind of a bird's eye view um remember half is in lindhurst half is in beachwood but there's capital grill to the right we just passed on the left cheesecake factory we got brio restaurant crate barrel is over to the right 
we've got all these other retail places. You have LL Bean, you've got Nordstrom Rack, you've got the Sporting Goods, tons of additional retail outlets, clothing stores, restaurants, um, Starbucks coffee. So on a nice day, you can take the kids out or just yourself, relax, grab a cup of coffee, get a sandwich, get some pizza, do some shopping, and uh, it's just a nice area of Beechwood. You have a traditional sense of Beachwood. You've got Beachwood Place Mall, anchored by Nordstrom and Saks and other places. Obviously, tons of retail and shopping to do over there. Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. Preston's Hope is a park for kids. It's designed specifically for children that have a handicap and need crutches or wheelchairs. You got the Art Center Pavilion Mall. Not a ton of Pavilion Mall, if you recall. That's where they're putting in the pickleball. Beachwood Place, I'll put the links in the description here of all the different stores and restaurants. Laplace. With Plus, you've got Hello Bistro, which is a really good salad shop. The Caribbean Shrimp Salad, by the way, is my favorite container store. And behind, you've got Mitchell's Ice Cream, which, if you're not familiar, there are lights at the door. It is excellent ice cream. Uh, I like and, and partial to the banana ice cream with a little hot fudge on top. They literally take banana cream pie, blend it in, so you get a little bit of that buttery crust with the bananas with the ice cream and a little hot fudge. What's there not to like other places to go to eat around Beachwood? All of this is in the description, but lots and lots of things to see and check out. Before we get into the data like average sales price and days on market and inventory and all that other good stuff, wanted to give you guys a feel, especially if you don't know Beachwood, Ohio. So we'll have a beautiful home like what you're looking at right now next to these ranches and split levels built in the 50s and 60s. And that's because Beachwood is a very coveted area. People want the lower property taxes. They love the schools, the community, the culture. They want to be here. So they'll buy a home. They'll raise it. And then they'll build the home of their dreams. And again, you'll see split level, ranch, ranch, split level, ranch, split level. Homes that are, you know, they're nice. They're fine. They're just not gorgeous. New and then you'll see someone is building a gorgeous newer home. So that gives you kind of a little bit of a vibe of the Beachwood neighborhood. Now let's get in. Okay, crossing the street. Be careful. Now we're going to get into the numbers and some data around the Beachwood market. There are three sources when I look at a market to do a deeper dive. And I'm not going to go into every single detail, but high level, this is a comparative market analysis. And I look at active, sold, pending, and contingent. But for active homes, there are 20, excuse me, 15 active homes right now. And they range on average from around, you know, two days on market, 217, and they range in price per square foot of 142 to 250. Uh, these have not sold yet, but it just gives an idea of where the competition is. So if you're thinking of selling your home, where the competition is, average is around 550, 560,000, with an average days on market of 41 days. Now, this is thrown off because of an outlier like 217 days on market. As far as contingent or pending, we don't know what it's sold for, but we do know at what price a motivated a buyer to come in and pull the trigger. So the average is around 195 for contingent and 185 for pending, eight days on market for pending, 79 days on market, cumulative days on market for contingent. Same average price is around 534, excuse me, 434. And for pendings, 500 difference between contingent and pending is typically, not always, Typically, a contingent home, inspections have not been signed off on, pendings they have. And then these are sold homes in the last six months. There were 42 homes that were sold. The low was 210, the high was 1.4 million. The average days on market was 45. Average home price sold price was 485, 486 thousand and then average list was 500 most homes sold around 97 percent of what it was listed at with 180 182 dollars per square foot now again that is over the last six months the other data points i like looking at this is a summary sheet of what we just saw of uh, the monthly nar statistical report national association of realtors now for the monthly report what's fascinating is it takes all the different homes in beachwood this is just a beachwood city beachwood sold and this is really really interesting because look 35 out of 61 homes sold were sold in cash so typically no appraisals no underwriting by the bank and people were having you know the largest amount of homes sold you were looking at count 67 so around 400 let's see pending active sold statistics total most homes sold were between 400 and 450 thousand dollars but half over half of the homes sold were cash. And the final 
metric or the final data point I like looking at for Beachwood is RPR. And this, we've talked about this before, what a seller balanced and buyer's market is. It's how many months of inventory. Typically, six months of inventory or less is a seller's market. More than six months, buyer's market. There's just more homes than buyers. And in Beachwood, May of 2023, 1.3 months of inventory for single-family condo, townhomes, and apartments. If I just look at single-family, I'm still looking at, I mean, it's insane. If you're thinking of selling your home, give me a call text email with the right game plan, the right marketing, with the data that I have access to and I use day in and day out. It is amazing what is going on in the market of how low inventory is and the prices we're able to get for sellers that are selling their homes. List of sold price, 101 days on market, three days. And I'm not going to go through every single metric here, but it breaks down estimated values, new listings, active listings. If you'd like a copy of this, again, shoot me a text or email. I'm happy to send you off a PDF of this. But that gives you an insight into what's going on in the Beachwood market. And I hope you hopefully you found this useful. Speaking with people who live in Beachwood, I do not live in Beachwood. I was able to get some pros and cons by residents. And I uh, want to go over briefly what I spoke with uh, probably about, I want to say four or five different groups. And uh, the pros were the Beachwood Park and Pool were outstanding. Really loved having that resource. Also, the city constantly has great and free programs for families, individuals, movie night, free concerts in the park, art programs, easy access to freeways. 271 is right in Beachwood. It's a quick jump on to get to anywhere you want to go, downtown or elsewhere. Great services like trash collection, snow removal, strong community, and low property taxes. 2.06% uh, when you compare that to, say, the Heights, Cleveland Heights, University Heights, Shaker Heights, where you're looking at high threes, even low 4% property taxes, it is quite a bit lower. Cons, just like everything, there's going to be pros and cons. Some people felt that there were a lot of rentals in the area. It could potentially hurt property values. Crime seemed, in some cases, to be moderately increasing. Could be a function of the uh, the rentals. Property taxes were increasing. Interesting, some people said low property taxes. One individual felt that property taxes, one or two said that the taxes overall seemed to be increasing. And a few people said that the politics in Beachwood weren't great. There were some news reports, uh, something with the mayor and something that there was some project done and they only had one RFP and a couple other things. They just said that it wasn't perfectly clean. So there were some complaints about this. But overall, my personal view, again, not living in Beachwood myself, is Beachwood is a great community. It's got phenomenal schools. Phenomenal property, values increasing, um, just an overall wonderful area that a lot of individuals, families, uh, again, for the wonderful schools, the pool, the park, it's just a great location and a great choice if you're considering either upsizing or moving to Northeast Ohio to consider it as part of your short list of places to be. And that's Beachwood, Ohio. What do you guys think of the video? Are there things you agree with, disagree with? Put the comments in below. Let me know your thoughts. Did I miss something? Is there something about Beachwood that you say, gosh, Joel, you missed this and this is terrible. Or maybe I put something in there that you say, Beachwood's got this X thing and it's amazing. I can't believe you forgot to mention it so people can know about it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if there are other videos that you have in mind that you'd like to see about Cleveland, Ohio. And if you have a specific question that I did not address and you want some guidance, some thoughts, just to bounce some ideas, give us a call, text, email. We love helping people out. If nothing else, give you some ideas that can help you out in this crazy market to put you in the right path so you can make an informed, good decision. And I'll see you guys in the next video. When I was younger, I used to love magic, and I still love magic. In fact, when I was in graduate school, it was a nice way to make a few extra bucks. My buddy, Rick Smith Jr., um, when he would to be too busy with corporate events and parties, I made a few bucks filling in for him. And now it's great to have my clients be able to look at homes, especially if their children are there and they're getting bored. It keeps them occupied while they can look at the homes. And uh, somebody in a different video I did who knew me said, hey, Joel, I'd love you to do some magic. Can we see some tricks? You asked, I answered. This is one of my favorite matrix routines where coins magically appear and disappear on their cards. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you guys soon.